after he had ended all his sayings in the ears of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and at the point of death. When he heard concerning Jesus, he sent unto him elders of the Jews, asking him that he will come and save his servant. Verse 4, And they, when they came to Jesus, besought him earnestly, saying, He is worthy that thou shouldest do this for him, for he loveth our nation, for he loveth our nation, and himself built us our synagogue. Verse 6, And Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, say unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I, I also am a man set under authority, having under myself soldiers. And I say to this one, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant. Do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned and said unto the multitude that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Can you see the verse there? And they, and they that were sent, returning to the house, and found the servant whole. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was reading this. I felt we can share together about learning the authority of Jesus. Just write learning the authority of Jesus. Because you can see how this man become a lesson to those who were following Jesus. After he came to Jesus and said, I understand authority upon you, Jesus never addressed that man again. You could see this man uh, coming and say, I don't want this person to come to my house. I know he's a man of authority. Can you speak a word there? If he speak a word there, it will happen. If you read there, you realize that this man understands authority. This man understands authority. And Jesus turned to the multitude who were following And say, can you see, this is a lesson to you are following him. From the beginning, Jesus wanted us to learn his authority. Tell him from the beginning, Jesus wanted us to learn his authority. And, you know, I found that authority upon Jesus was making him to be one with his father. Because authority upon you shows who is with you. This man was not even prayed for. It's only when they went back after Jesus was suppressed. I have not found a faith even to this people, even in Israel. 
But when these people turn back, they found the servant was whole. Can you just read this verse again, verse 9? That's where I want us to consider. Say, when Jesus heard these things, when Jesus heard these things, heard these things, what the men, the men were speaking, he marveled at him and turned and said unto the multitude that followed him, I say unto you, in other words, Jesus was saying, you see, you people who are following me, you have been following me but you have not reached the level of understanding how I operate. I have not found this kind of faith. Learning Jesus' authority is to learn, to learn his faith. How he operates learning Jesus' authority is to learn his faith and how Jesus operates. This is the same Jesus who said you will do what I have done and you even do more because I go to the Father. The same Jesus. So without learning how his authority we, are, we won't even operate how he operates. You could hear, he said, okay, I'm going to the Father, you will do what I've done, but I promise you, you will even do more. I've been looking at our churches, I said, you know, if we can do what Jesus was doing, what will happen? Not even doing more. What he, what he did when he can just speak a word the results are visible when I read I found that I mean, around like us it's few people who are operating that way many of us we are just trying to say we are doing it it's, it's not this way, way. Authority must be practiced. Must be learned. If you, if you believe, say amen. Let me show you another scripture. Maybe you'll understand. Because when I try to learn this thing, I say, why, why our Christianity is like failing now? Why are we failing in results? If we read John 10, that's where Jesus was teaching the Jews about his authority. When they fail to understand, they Can we just read verse 30? John 10, verse 30. You will see Jesus teaching people authority. Uh, he was showing them that you know the disciples now belongs to him and nobody can take them away from him the problem is when Jesus said me and the father we are one Jews were angry Whereas Jesus was saying, no, whatever I do, I do it under the authority of the Father. Because the authority you possess makes you one with the one who gave you. Tell me the authority you possess makes you one with the one who gave you. If you don't have authority, you don't have anybody. If you don't have authority, you don't have anyone. But having authority, it means there is someone who gave you. I don't know if you're hearing that. They were angry. If you read verse 30, then you see. When he began to say, okay, if you don't believe in me, believe in the works that I have done. Uh, even that they were not even understanding because this work shows where I come from can you just ask someone do you have works that people are talking about 
I mean, the works that you are doing shows where you come from. If you don't sleep home, it shows where you come from. I'm just giving you an example. If you don't sleep home, it shows where you come from. If you don't sleep home, it shows where you come from. If you are healing people, it shows that there is someone behind you. Let's learn the authority of Jesus. Learn the authority of Jesus. Look how the Jews were angry. And remember, they were Pharisees. Because, you know, all the time before you move forward, you will find that there are already people who move forward. You found people ahead of you. Many people ahead of you are a problem of you. Because they want things to be done their way. They don't want things to be done by the one who gave you those things. And sometimes we end up placing those people. But when I read here, I found that Jesus, because of of the works that manifested in his ministry. He tried to show them, I understand you know where I come from. But look at the authority and what it brings out. Tell them the authority in your life. It brings out the results you will see. I found that authority of Jesus makes Jesus to be Jesus. If you want to see, learn his authority and practice the way he was practicing things. There will be no difference between you and Jesus. I mean, Jesus was a man of love. A man of, of destroying the works of Satan. Not of encouraging Satan authority upon you that you can learn from Jesus it will make you to be one with Jesus tell them about authority that you will learn from Jesus it will make you to be one with Jesus it will be easy for you to show the results he showed if you read Matthew 23 from 1 to 6 I just want us to read from verse 1. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. From verse 1. Let's read that. Learn the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. You say what? Then Jesus spoke to the crowd and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in Moses' chair, of authority as teacher of the law. So practice and observe everything they tell you, but do not do as they do, for they preach things, but do not practice them. The scribes and the Pharisees tie up heavy loads that are hard to bear and place them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to make them lighter. They do all their deeds to be seen by men, for they make their philanthropics telling, telling things wide to make them more conspicuous and make their tassels long. They love the place of distinction and honor at feet and the best seats in the synagogue. Those on the platform near the scrolls and the law facing the congregation. Okay, if you can see, Jesus was teaching about the authority in the flesh. Authority in the flesh is whatever we do is for people to see. Here he, he began to show that, you know, everybody can open the Bible. Do what they are teaching you. 
But it's possible they can be used to disturb your faith. So don't look at what they are doing. Their character. It is easy for us who are preaching to disturb those who are listening. It is so easy that if we can be tempted, we can confuse many who want to listen. When Satan strikes the head, the sheep will scatter. We who are preaching, we must be very careful of many, many temptations that will come. Even the Bible says, let us be careful that many of us must not be leaders because we are going to be having a judgment a strong judgment challenge on the left and the right there is no leaders even now who are preaching the gospel who does not have a challenge challenges are everywhere challenge is everywhere so now here Jesus said, remember, once you find that someone who's preaching is challenged, carry on doing what the person was preaching. Here he found that all oh, the Pharisees and the leaders, the Sanhedrin were sharing the word. But he told them straight that these people, they are famous. They want to sit in front. Even the dress, when they pass here, you'll, be, you'll see them. Do what they are saying. Don't be disturbed by their character. Because, listen to this, this is the now time that when you do the things of God, you don't look at anybody. Tell them, when you do things of God, you don't look at anybody. If you look at that verse, it shows that it's possible you can be taught the word. And you find that when you stand up, you do the difference. It's when you are focusing on the people who are looking on the flesh. It's possible after you say amen, you can be disturbed and you do the difference. I, I don't know if you are hearing that. Because if you want to have authority, it's when you learn but you are not disturbed. It's when you take the word but you are not disturbed. I don't know if you are hearing that. So the teaching must be teaching to you until don't be affected by the ones who are trying to show themselves. Because everybody has got a weakness. If you search for anybody's weakness, you find it. So what you need to do is to take what you are hearing to yourself and you practice it yourself and not disturbed by the people who are in front of you. Remember, that's how you get authority. That's how when you speak, things will happen. Do you know why today we are trying to leave Christianity? Because we are searching for the results in a wrong way. If we are Christians, we are supposed to be speaking things and they happen. Not try to get the second hand from someone. You are the first hand. You are supposed to speak things and things happen. Because we lack authority, we love to take advantage of others to establish our stands. We take the, the advantage to others' weakness. Because we lack authority, we establish our stands. Another thing starts from something. Of someone. 
But here Jesus never did that. Mara Jesu maadi aseo. He was different from them. Na afapa ne le bona. If he heal people. Afu di shabatu. He can even hide. Wa khona lo ipika. And run away. A chaba. Jesus never wanted praise. He could just even ride. He knew. Jesu na asa ne kutumishwa. Ba tse ba taulo ile ngodi mo agai. He, knew, he didn't want anybody to advertise. Na asana ke mo thwa mo advertise mo lele ka yena. I don't know if you are hearing me. I can say about it. Authority upon you. itself. He had the advertise yona. So the moment if you receive authority of Jesus. Na no kana ko ye wena wo amogela taulo ya Jesu. Whatever we speak we will see. Ka mo ka tsari di bolelang re to di amogela. Did you read Matthew 4 verse 4? O ngele wa bala Matthew 4:4. Just write it down. Verse e waleng fast. And see what Jesus said. When Satan say Jesus, ah, Satan are Jesus. Can you command these stones as you are hungry? Go lay them as we eat. Kakawa no swere kital. Make them bread. I go at ye bohove. Jesus says, I know authority. Ori Jesus ki ori afetu la ki ati bata ulo. I know authority that I've been given. Ki ati bata ulo yiki filuing. Whatever I get. Kamu kache ki di kwechao. If I want to live, I ginya go pila. It will be the ways that. Proceed out of the mouth. Of that, God. Is, that is not the second hand blessing. That is the first hand blessing. There's a second hand blessing. And the first hand blessing. Hand from God is the first hand. Jesus said, No, I can get whatever. I can get. I'm not disparate. From God, I can get whatever I need. Sometimes we become so much disparate because we don't understand authority. You can speak money, you get it. I don't know if you're hearing that. Than to try to turn around finally. If you learn authority, you will see how Jesus find things where there's nothing. At Olangi, lo most ne. Because authority brings provision. You desire. Authority of God. Authority of Jesus. Brings provision that is needed by Him. I don't know if you're hearing that. Are you learning the authority of Jesus? Let me show you some scripture where Jesus shows something. In 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 John fifteen verse five. Mola wa John fifteen five. If you read that the verse aloud, it will work very well. He say what? John fifteen five. You know you know this verse. John fifteen verse five. He say what? I say like it's ever. I am the vine. I'm the vine. You are the branches. The branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me. That is cut off from vital union with me. Uh, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. You know, here the Bible says that for you to show that you have got authority of Jesus. Or when I want to run a little, I am running a Jesus. You stay with Him. Udula liena. Abide with Him. Udula moena. Remember, you abide with Him. Abide in His way. Oh, and now Udula liena. Udula moli. Whatever you ask, it will happen. Ah, Udu hopela di lo di to petagala. But here the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. But the Bible says, without me, you cannot do anything. I mean, since the beginning. Have you ever had someone opening the eyes of a blind? Lengkela la to amutu mungo baru ubuchi matua mutu. You are showing the authority. Na abonja taelo. So I've been here. Arem kile kile mo. Church being blind. Kile mo kire kenge la na kile si fufu. But. Jesus just came here and did something. But so they say, so what do you say about this? He said, yeah, this man is a man. No, we don't believe in them. He didn't mind what they did. What is mind was the result of the authority. He says, since from the beginning, you know this man wanted to tell them that I've been with you. You guys, you are powerless. He wanted to 
tell them this is Remember, the parents were attending the church. And this guy was born blind. He grew up to reach 40 years. When he's 40 years, he's when he met Jesus. So he, he was supposed to have confronted them. Then they asked him, he said, tell me, why you guys you were failing to open my eyes? If I was this man, I was supposed to have asked them. It's true that you people, you are powerless. There's nothing in you. But he just said, since the world began, I've ever heard that there's someone opened the eyes of the man who's blind. And these people say, I know. I'm sure you believe him. We believe in Moses. So what do you say about him? So this man is a prophet. So what do you say about him? 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 If you have got authority, how we know not to do it? You must bring things that has never happened. So what do you say about him? So what do you say about him? There have to be results. So what do you say about him? That has never happened. I pray from today that God will give you authority as you are learning the authority of Jesus. There must be results that has never happened. You know, don't ever think it will be easy. Uh, you know, not this past week. I was also trying to say, can I make people to understand who am I? I've been trying to say, when something happened, I tried to explain. And later, you know, it's only this morning I heard that. Remember that you have got authority. You don't, you don't need anybody to, to know anything. Let them talk. Because usually we want people to understand. And we forget we have got a serious backup. So most of the time I was trying to say when things happen, let me try to tell them the truth about me. And the more you try to explain to them it's as if you are defending yourself and you did what they said. It's the more they scrutinize you, criticize you, it's the more they talk. So that is why Jesus will just do something. That is why Jesus will just do something. Or do something and carry on doing this focus was from him. That's why Jesus in the last day when he was on the cross, he said, "Ah, Lord, why have you forsaken me?" Because always he was seeing him. We need always to see him. Then try to defend ourselves. Ah, you just realize that uh, it's better. You look unto him. The author and the finisher of our faith. Than to look at our challenges. To look at the problems. We carry on speaking. To show the authority. Because when we speak, our words create. We carry on creating. Until those who see, who want to be like Thomas, end up seeing. We must speak and tell Thomas. I don't know if you're hearing me. Tell him to say, you must speak until the doubters see what you're talking. So don't ever think someone is witching. You know, your relationship with Christ establishes authority you are searching. I don't know if you are hearing that. Let me show you this scripture. Maybe it will help us also. Look at this Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Verse 5 to 6. I want us to read this verse. Verse 5 to 6. Hebrews 13. 13. 5 to 6. Verse 5. Verse 6. Listen to the verse. Listen if you have not found it. Just see. 
Read, Mama. Let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature mm. be free from the love of money. Mm. Shun greed, be financially ethical, being content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstance desert you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Nor will I in any degree leave you helpless. Nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So, so we take comfort mm. and are encouraged and confidently say, the Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. While will men, what will men do to me? Hey, that verse, I love it. That verse say, let's get out of the love of money. I know the writer of Hebrews was telling us that the love of money can make us to develop some things or formulas of say we want more money to move forward. You know, uh, to be honest, in this world, money, money, if I money. Sing like, he let it fail. Yeah, this man say, Mom, now we're able to the love of money no, cannot provide anything. And also, we need to reach a level where we understand that it's only him alone who can provide. So if now we get away, with all these characters of loving man. The Lord who said he will never leave us. He will make us to be confident in speaking. The Lord is my helper. Do you know that uh, here the scripture shows that it's not money that bring what you need. Is the Lord who is your helper. Once you are with him. Abiding in him. Abiding in his way. The Lord will bring your needs. Sometimes the Lord will allow people you trust to leave you. So that you'll be able to say, the Lord is my helper. Do you know why we are not able to say, the Lord is my helper? Because we love money. And we are trying to get money in our home. And this makes us to be slaves. Try to get money in the wrong way. But if we put money aside. And we believe on what money cannot buy. We'll be able to put all our trust to God. And say the Lord is my helper. I can't, through my salary I can't get this. I need to believe God. So therefore you will trust the authority upon God. The authority upon Jesus. And you begin to speak things unto God. Existence. This is the same thing that God taught Abraham. Abraham, you don't have children. But I want to show you this. Get out from your house. Because you, you want to get children inside the house. Get out from your house. Look up there. Do you see stars there? So your children will be like stars. Look down. You see Sandy. Your children won't be numbered. Be like Sandy. When Abraham is in the house, he'll be thinking about what? How can I get a child? I'm in the house. But God said, get out. I want to show you. I want you to talk. To talk authority. I don't want you to talk failure. He went out. And he said yes. 
when Satan tried to strike his mind, look at yourself. You are about to die. The will say, hey, listen, Satan. My children will be like stars. In number, can you count the stars? So he was able to have confidence in what God has promised. If you want to receive from God, have confidence in what he has promised. He will do it in the name of Jesus. Let me give you an example. There was a time when my wife told me something. She said, yes, I know people are fighting you. But because you have never fought anyone, God will never leave you. From there, I realized this scripture. You have to say, God, God is my helper. When everybody is going away from you, it's only God who will help you. We must reach a level where no, people must go away from us. And we see God only as the helper. Not as people it's as a helper. Let me try to tell you what you don't know. When God wants to do a new thing, He allows everything to work against you. Everything. You can be surprised family against you. You find if you have a church against you, you remember that you will be surprised. You don't know what to pray in and pray out. So that you will be left alone. To say God. You are my helper. Do you remember what happened to Hezekiah? When the prophet announced him. Uh, and mm. say. Are. Set your house in order. You shall die. He just faced to the wall. He never faced to the people. That's where faith began. Where there's nobody you can trust. I don't know if you're hearing me. And you began to trust in the authority of Jesus. That is out of the ways you can speak. That God can hear alone. Let me just try to tell someone who's facing challenges here. Don't look at that challenge. Learn the authority of Jesus. Speak something. Don't speak failure. Don't entertain Satan. Speak something, it will happen. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Look what Jesus did. In Matthew 17, from verse 24. I love this. That's what Jesus shows. Can I read for you? When they were come to Capernaum, they that receive half shekel came to Peter. Yeah, it was like a challenge. They, they didn't go straight to Jesus. They came to Peter By and Peter. said, Doth not your teacher pay the half shekel? Peter said, Yeah. Peter yes. said, When he came into the house, Jesus speak first to him. Yeah, it's like Jesus so what they did to Peter. Because that's what the Bible says. Jesus speaks first to him. In other words, Peter never reported this to Petro to Jesus. It's only when they came to the house. No, when Peter came to the house, Jesus speaks first to him. Saying, what thinkest thou, Simon? Simon. The kings of the earth, from whom do they receive toll or tribute? From their sons or from strangers? And when he said, from strangers, Jesus said to him, therefore the sons are free. 37, but lest we cause them to stumble. Go thou to the sea and cast a hook 
thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a shake. That take and give unto them for me and you know I read this thing I say hey yeah <laughs> this way get money where I mean uh, Peter got money by the direction of Jesus I read this I say huh you know the way we are getting money <laughs> as how do you get money you know here it was a, a very bad situation the first person that was supposed to be consulted was Judas Iscariot but Judas here was not mentioned it's only Jesus I mean when he was in the house it seems as if Peter went out and left Jesus there. When he was out, he met these guys. Come here. We want to find out. Let's, let's arrest this master. So tell us, does he pay? That man said, oh yes. He always pay. But now, the moment when Peter entered the house. Jesus first speaking said, Peter, Tell me which ones are you supposed to pay? You could see Jesus could see everything. And Peter said, No, you know, he answered rightly and said, Before he even answered, he said, But the sons are exempted. Peter said, Yes, okay. We must not offend them. Can you just go to the river? Just go there. The first fish you catch, you will find money. You'll find a shekel. shekel Did that shekel pay shekel for me and you? I read this, I said, what kind of authority is this? Of getting money without no problem. Of getting money without no problem. Look how we get money. We don't even believe God can do something. We don't believe any direction from Jesus. This is Jesus, Jesus who said, Money can be found anywhere. There was no any desperation. Of worrying, he said, without worrying about this people. And try to bring concern. Let us not offend them. Go to the river. First fish. It's like I'm seeing Peter doing like this. Because Peter was, that was his trade. He was intelligent on that. When he just threw it like ah, this, when he, like this, when he opened, he found ah, money. And Jesus said, Don't bring money to me. It's quite this again. And it was not the first miracle Jesus did and something like this. Where he doesn't want to see that miracle. He just said, Take this money you got. Take it to those people you pay. The first miracle Jesus, when he changed wine, he never wanted to taste it. So go and take the leader to drink it and taste it. And the leader began to say, yeah, this, was what, this one was very good. Jesus was something else. He understood his authority. I don't know if you are hearing that. Let me show you this scripture with close. Psalm 71 verse 24. It's David who was speaking. Read, Mama. My tongue also will speak of your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed, for they are humiliated who speak my injury. You heard that verse there? My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are put to shame, for they that confounded that sick my head. What God wants us is to speak God's righteousness. 
so that when we speak something when it exists they will be ashamed everybody is having enemies tell them everybody is having opposition there are people who want you to be heard you don't know satan is using them against you so don't talk about them your tongue must always speak the righteousness of God thank you Lord thank you Lord always thank you Lord you are faithful you wake me up to see the grace of God the last scripture I want to give you which you can go home and meditate about this scripture Remember the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel 2. Maybe we read verse 3. When Samuel was born, read 1 Samuel chapter 2, chapter 2. verse 3. Verse 3. Can you read for me? He says what? Chapter 2 verse 3. Here. Do not go on boasting uh-huh. so very proudly. Yes. Do not let arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed rather examined. Let me read American Standard Version. He say, Talk no more so exceedingly proudly let not arrogance come out of your mouth amen for jehovah is a god of knowledge amen and by him actions are waned amen this is anna who was facing problems from penina there was a delay of getting a yeah, child na on the side of of anna now already she was called that she's a man now when God shows his power she began to say don't talk proudly if you look at that verse it says Jehovah is a God of knowledge don't talk so loud and forget what God can do. Don't talk proudly against someone who is having a delay. There is authority of Jesus that can bring the best results. Sometimes when things are delayed our enemies speak louder. I don't know if you are hearing that. If you read verse 2, you will see. She was praised and said, There is none holy as Jehovah. For there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. She was trusting God. Believing God only. Remember that the husband is to give her the best offering to offer. Until one day when she cried before the man of God. By that time he was Eli. And the authority upon God from God came upon him when the man said you have to be given what you need. And that word brought a smile. And the Bible says it changed the continents a face was changed sometimes you need the servant of the Lord to speak a word and you believe it and that word will bring the results you desire if you believe shout hallelujah